Hello everyone. Welcome to the module 3 of getting started with Hadoop Ecosystem Core Components course and this module is all about understanding MapReduce processing engine with YARN. So why we are learning MapReduce and YARN? MapReduce is nothing but the processing engine of Hadoop Ecosystem and YARN is yet another resource negotiator which is kind of a heart of Hadoop ecosystem and we will see what exactly YARN is doing for us and we will see what YARN is doing for us so that we can use varieties of processing engines under Hadoop ecosystem. About Audin School Audience School is a technology upskilling platform. We help you continuously acquire new skills. So stay skilled, stay ahead. Introducing myself, my name is Tushar Kakaya. I am having 8 plus years of IT experience working with various forms of data. My main skill set includes Microsoft Business Intelligence, Hadoop Ecosystem Components, Big Data Analytics using Apache Spark. I have worked with tools like Cloudera, SQL Server Management Studio and my main domain expertise is under telecommunication. So in today's session, we are going to cover processing engines in Hadoop. What exactly do we mean by that? We will understand MapReduce algorithm. We will see what are the processing engine demons in release 1 and then we will compare them with MapReduce version 2, which is also known as YARN, what are what all the changes are there in the demons and all. So what is processing engine in Hadoop? Processing engine means simply if I tell you I'm having some, some sort of data with me and I just want to process the data and generate the information, then that task is getting accomplished by a processing engine or a processing technique. So the main task which is performed by any processing engine would be converting data to information because raw data is there everywhere. Until and unless you don't convert that data to information, you will be not having any clue what exactly you want to get from that data, what, how you can use that particular data. So information is very crucial in this today's world. So there are many Processing engines which Hadoop supports, one of them is MapReduce, then another one is Spark, then another one is Taze also and there are many. But if I tell you particularly about Hadoop Release 1, then Hadoop Release 1 was having a flagship processing engine which is nothing but MapReduce and in today's module we are going to get a deep dive into we are going to deep dive into MapReduce as a processing engine what exactly it is doing and how it is having some disadvantages which was then later on uh, you know uh, resolved by uh, YARN which is also MapReduce version 2 and how other supporting processing engine can help you to build your Hadoop ecosystem. So let me introduce MapReduce framework. So MapReduce framework is a programming model for distributed data processing and it is completely based on the Java programming language. Basically, Hadoop can run MapReduce programs written in various languages but MapReduce framework itself is written in Java. So MapReduce programs are inherently parallel and that is where the advantage of the distribution starts. So it puts very large scale data, let us say you are having, uh, you know, uh, so many files which you want to process. Okay, so uh, that large scale data analysis, uh, you know, uh, with various machines, so many machines would be there that would be, you know, performing this, uh, uh, you know, uh, task of converting data to information that would happen uh, automatically or you can say you just need to uh, code for a single machine and it would become a parallel distributed program with the help of MapReduce framework. So that is where the beauty of MapReduce framework is there. So as a programmer you don't have to worry about the uh, distribution of your data. It would be handled by the framework itself. 
basically map reduce algorithm contains two important tasks the very first one is map task and second one is nothing but the reduce task so uh, the map the map task will take a set of data let us say you are having some data set it will take the data it will try to convert it into another set of data but this another set of data or output data would be having individual elements broken down into various tuples and this tuple will have some key value pair like key value 1 uh, uh, then key value 2 something like this so uh, the whole data set would be divided into various key value pairs then we are having this reduce uh, uh, you know task uh, it takes the output from a map that means this key value pair it will uh, you know take that as an input it will try to combine those data tuples into a smaller set of tuples so you can say uh, similar key would be aggregated uh, like some max mean this kind of aggregate function you can apply on the similar key and then you can uh, you know uh, give a very smaller set of tuples in the output and that would be nothing but your uh, reduce output so th this way the tasks are actually distributed between map task and reduce task so what all are the advantages of using MapReduce as a framework? We are using MapReduce basically because it is very easy to scale uh, the data processing over multiple computing nodes. It's all about horizontal scalability as we discussed in our previous module where you simply need to add more machines if you want to make your program uh, more scalable. If your uh, data set is increasing then you just need to uh, add a couple of nodes in your cluster and you can make this horizontally scalable system and perform the various uh, you know uh, uh, large scale uh, data processing uh, tasks. The data processing primitives are called mappers and reducers. So decomposing is sometimes sometimes very non trivial basically so application in the map reduce form uh, you know they always uh, design to scale the application to run over hundreds thousands or even tens of thousands of machine in a cluster so that only through a com configuration change a, a small configuration change is required to just scale down your application so that, that that's easy it is to you know uh, uh, you know scale up or scale down your application so very simple scalability is provided over here and the coding model is also very easy programmers uh, as i told you previously also like programmers are simply writing the program keeping in mind that this is a sequential processing program all the parallelism aspects of your uh, implementation would be handled by the framework itself and another beauty of MapReduce framework is the support of unstructured data set along with the structured and semi-structured data set because it is written in Java Java provides various rich set of libraries for images audio video and this kind of unstructured data so it would be very good to do any sort of image processing in parallel or in distribution using MapReduce framework and it is designed for uh, you know uh, fault tolerant concept in mind so that even if any failure occurs uh, like HDFS uh, design it would be handled automatically by the MapReduce framework without any uh, interruption to the uh, uh, you know program execution. Let me speak about some uh, you know uh, brief history about this programming model so MapReduce was uh, first popularized as a programming model in 2004 by Jeffrey Dean and Sanjay Ghemawat uh, they were at Google uh, in 2004 and uh, in in one of their papers which was like MapReduce simplified data processing on large clusters in this particular paper they discussed Google's approach to collect and analyze their website data for uh, you know that search engine optimization and Google's proprietary MapReduce system ran on the Google file system which is GFS not the HDFS generally the MapReduce uh, you know uh, processes the data which is there on Hadoop distributed file system but in this particular uh, proprietary 
proprietary MapReduce system uh, that ran on GFS, which is Google File System. Uh, then uh, Apache, uh, which is an open source organization, as we know, they began using MapReduce in the Nudge project. Nudge project was actually, uh, you know, a web search uh, engine project, which is still active today. Then Hadoop began as a sub project in Apache Lucene project, which provides text search capabilities across the large databases. You know, you want to uh, do any text search across large databases, then that is the project. And uh, in 2006, basically, Duck Cutting is the uh, person uh, to whom we can give credit. He was an employee of Yahoo. Uh, he implemented this all, uh, uh, you know, things discussed in that paper uh, using Java as a programming language and he designed Hadoop. Uh, and he named uh, Hadoop after his son's toy elephant. And that is the reason Hadoop is having that uh, toy elephant in its, uh, you know, uh, logo. So in 2008, uh, if we see like Hadoop became a very top level Apache uh, project and uh, on July 2008, an experimental 4000 node cluster was created using Hadoop and in 2009 there was a performance test happened and Hadoop was able to sort a terabyte of data in just 17 hours. So that was a record breaking uh, thing in this uh, you know uh, distributed world in that distributed world that that's what that's what uh, you know where it came from uh, the brief history of MapReduce. Then if we uh, see about the usage of this particular um, programming model, then uh, most of the, uh, you know, uh, big giant, uh, big giants are using this uh, MapReduce framework like Amazon, uh, Yahoo, Zvents. They are using for their search processing. They, they, they are optimizing their future search using statistical analysis. Then uh, in the e-commerce industry today, uh, you know, major players are using Hadoop uh, or MapReduce for high volume of data processing. So if we talk about like Facebook, Yahoo, ContextWeb, uh, you know, Just and Last.fm. So they are using Hadoop to process the logs behind the scene. Every application is collecting some logs, right? And they are uh, doing some analysis. They do the data mining for the clickstream data. Clickstream data, that means nothing but whatever and, uh, you know, uh, clicks which you are doing. Uh, okay, uh, that would be recorded, uh, you know, your uh, browsing history or you can say your browsing pattern from this page to that page you are going uh, with some clicks. Okay, so those clicks would be recorded. And that way they are analyzing or mining the, uh, you know, user's activity, user's preferences. and that's a way to uh, give a profitability to a website. Then Facebook and AOL, uh, they are using in their data warehouses as a way to effectively store and mine the large amount of data they collect. And we will, we will, uh, uh, you know, we can see like Facebook is actually using and mine the large amount of data they collect. And uh, we can see Facebook is using Hive as a data warehousing tool, which is also running behind the scene MapReduce only. Then the New York Times uh, and I like they are using Hadoop to store and analyze, store and analyze the videos and images. So let us learn this MapReduce algorithm. So here basically the idea is like you are sending the computer or the resources uh, to do some calculation. Those resources would be reaching to the data where the data is. So let us say your data uh, or the file on which you want to perform some uh, you know processing task is there at this particular node which is N1 then the resources would go to that data rather than in centralized architecture where data was going to the uh, you know uh, processing engine or the processing uh, unit here the processing unit is coming uh, uh, you know uh, to where the data uh, resides and uh, this program execution is basically divided into three stages uh, mainly two stages we'll see uh, how the third stage is also there but as a programmer it is uh, you know uh, uh, it is for you 
writing only two stages but behind the scene if i if i tell you what happens exactly the execution is divided into three stages the very first stage is nothing but the map stage so uh, the map or the mapper's job is to process the input data whatever input data which uh, you are giving uh, let us say some file or something like that then uh, generally the input data uh, uh, you know generally they are from the file or a directory basically and they are stored on a hadoop distributed file system so this input file would be uh, you know processed by the mapper uh, uh, line by line if you see then the mapper will process the data and it will create several small chunks of data and there can be multiple mappers depending on the requirement okay and the second stage then comes which is nothing but the reduce stage but actually reduce stage uh, if you if you talk about reduce stage then it involves a third stage which which is nothing but the shuffle stage as well and actually the shuffle stage comes before actual redu reduce state uh, uh, or reduce stage starts so it's it's like this a mapper uh, you know or map stage which will go to uh, you know shuffling stage and then comes the reduce stage so in in this particular uh, stage the reducer's job is nothing but to uh, you know process the data that coming from the mapper and after processing it will produce some new set of uh, output which will again uh, you know getting stored uh, in the hdfs so uh, it's it's always uh, starting with hdfs that, that means the input data is coming from hdfs and output is also uh, you know stored in hdfs so uh, it's all about you know processing engine's job uh, so that it it takes the file from hdfs it uh, you know writes the file to hdfs in terms of output and then in between all the processing happens so uh, this particular map reduce framework manages all the details of data passing such as like issuing the task or verifying whether the task com got completed or not then copying the data around the cluster between the nodes right because ultimately the data is divided into multiple nodes as we have seen in hdfs module so most of the computing takes place on the nodes with the data on local disk that reduce the network traffic so if i'm having the data Data at node one, then mostly, uh, you know, it will try to process the data on this particular n1 uh, node only. It will try to run that map reduce code on this n1 node only. Why? Because local disk advantage, uh, you know, uh, that would that would be actually reducing the network traffic, so data is not travelled much, you know. So after completion of the given tasks, the cluster collects and reduces the data to form an appropriate result and uh, then it sends it uh, you know and then it uh, sends back to the hadoop server so this is how the typical map reduce algorithm runs at a higher level so i'm trying to explain you this map reduce algorithm with with a classic word count example so this is our word count explanation what exactly the word count problem is so you will be having a file with list of words uh, you know and uh, this is for example your file is where deer bear river car car river deer car bear okay so uh, this these are the words few words which are written in the file which is kind of an input for us and finally what i want is every word if you see which is separated by a space which is like uh, deer then uh, this bear river car you know these are the different words i want to see uh, you know uh, the frequency of these words let's say bear if it is there then bear is repeating like uh, two times so i should have a count of each uh, word so a count should be displayed against each word so that is that is what my uh, you know requirement is that is what i want to achieve okay and this kind of uh, you know word kind uh, this kind of word count is very useful when you are doing some sort of sentimental analysis like uh, you know amazon if it is uh, there then amazon is using this kind of algorithm to find out from uh, you know comments uh, of all the products let us say a particular product is there and people uh, like thousand people have commented on that uh, product about the review review of the product 
then it will try to find some words like wow awesome product then uh, you know very good product then uh, these are the positive words right then negative words are also there not worth the money uh, not a good product price is very high you know uh, a very cheap product so these are the keywords which are defining negative uh, you know impression about the uh, products review so depending on the uh, you know word count that means positive words are repeating how how many times and then negative words are repeating how many times based on that okay positive and negative uh, you know reviews are actually uh, decided whether that product is a good product or not so as an end user you will be having a good idea like uh, this much fraction of uh, users are finding this product as a useful product or positive product and uh, this uh, this product is not so good for uh, this many number of uh, people so this word count is a very classic problem which will be you know useful for you in our uh, you know daily uh, processing or analysis of data uh, kind of scenario so uh, four phases uh, are there in this entire process i have split down into four four different phases the very first one is splitting splitting means you are splitting uh, you know uh, with the default as a line delimiter which is slash n in our case like you are dividing basically your input file to multiple uh, you know lines okay so wherever the first line is second line is and third line is it is splitting them simply splitting okay and this is also known as file input format operation so uh, if you if you simply see uh, the next slide you will see that yeah so here if you see uh, the file is there at hdfs this is the file it is split in this fif file input format and here if you see uh, everything would be converted into key value pair okay this would be the format of the splitting key value pair so there would be some key against that some value would be there so whenever you are uh, doing this splitting phase this is your uh, splitting phase so in the splitting phase basically the very first key would be nothing but the uh, location uh, or the character location uh, of the first character of the line okay so uh, let us say dear so d d is at zeroth location then uh, this entire line is there so that would be your value then this for the very second key value pair if you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so this contains 15 characters then from the 16th character which is uh, you know the second line is starting so 16th character would be kind of a split for us so 16th character would be your key and value would be this car car river and then again 16 17 18 like that if you count then 30 uh, you know 30th character would be again a split of the next line so 30 comma and then uh, you know your value would be uh, started or value would be stated so this way uh, you got 0 comma dear bear river that is as a uh, that is your first key value pair then the second key value pair is 16 comma car car river and the third one is 30 comma dear car bear okay now uh, after splitting it would be passed to the mapper phase or mapping phase okay and don't worry about this splitting phase guys as a developer or as a implementation uh, you know perspective you are writing only mapper and reducer rest of the things would be taken care of by the map reduce framework so you don't have to write them then comes the mapping uh, uh, you know process where uh, this would be again split this would be again split because we want word count right we want word count and in the word count the line this is again a line right dear bear river this is a line you your line should be split into word uh, you know with any white spaces in between so wherever a white space come uh, uh, you know you just need to break it down to a single uh, key which is dear so like dear then uh, bear and then river so this first line is pa passed to mapper number one second line is passed to mapper number two and third uh, line uh, or third key value would be passed to mapper number three so there are three mappers which are involved in this entire process and all of them are splitting the line okay or uh, you can say splitting the line into separate words and uh, 
uh, word is becoming the key now and value by default static 1 is given. Generally in our mapper phase we always try to write down always remember mapper means business logic your business rule business logic would be written in this uh, you know map phase so in map reduce uh, if you want to write down any business logic how you implement this program the core logic of uh, you know solving that puzzle uh, that is that is what written in the mapper phase and in our word count problem which we are solving over here here the business logic is what like you split into words and for every word you mark it as a one for the very first time right and then you count uh, you know so that uh, splitting the lines into words is what your business logic is and that is what written in the mapping and uh, you can see dear comma one bear comma one so value is again repeating it is a static one only okay then comes the shuffling phase Okay, shuffling is also involving, uh, you know, sorting. So sometimes it is also known as sorting and shuffling phase where what will happen like similar keys would be combined together. Let us say uh, deer, then all the deer uh, key would be uh, coming at one place. Okay, with appropriate value like deer comma one and deer comma one, they would come at one place. They would be clubbed together. Uh, and that is what shuffling is okay and then sorted according to the key okay so uh, like key is here a uh, string so it would be like alphabetical sorting so b uh, starting with b would come first then c and then d and then r so this way all the keys are first shuffled they are shuffling so that similar key uh, you know are grouped together and then they are shorted and finally the reduce uh, you know stage or reduce uh, reducing process is actually doing aggregation okay aggregation means max mean average sum uh, you know count those kind of operation upon a particular key for example beer comma one and beer comma uh, you know bear comma one and bear comma one so what it will do okay so it will do bear comma two that means a similar key would be clubbed together a single key would be there so list of key value pair is given like k1 v1 then k1 v2 then k1 v3 and in the reduce stage we will be having k1 single times and then you apply for example some operation of v1 v2 and v3 like this so bear comma 2 car comma 1 plus 1 plus 1 3 deer comma 2 river comma 2 and finally all these things would be written to a hdfs file which is known as file output format and you got your output so this is the entire process how the map reduce framework works so this is what uh, you know uh, we have discussed uh, in this word count problem uh, so these are the phases which we already discussed like input splits which is uh, you know input to a map reduce job and it is divided into fixed size uh, you know your job would be divided into fixed size pieces called input splits so input split is nothing but a chunk of the input that is consumed by a single mapper right that is what we have seen then uh, you know mapping uh, is also there uh, which is a very first phase in the execution if you see and uh, data in each uh, input split so that uh, that particular one uh, dear comma one and car comma one this is nothing but one input split so that is passed to the mapping function to produce the output values uh, and uh, generally uh, you know uh, shuffling phase is actually kind of a internal phase where uh, you know all the keys would be clubbed together uh, along with their values okay and that would be uh, consuming the output of the mapping phase and then the reducing uh, stage is there where output values from the shuffling phase would be aggregated basically you know so that uh, you know a single output value would be written and reducing or reducer is kind of a summarizing the complete data set Generally, it contains the aggregation logic as I already told you and always remember this is an optional phase. 
uh, why it is an optional phase because sometimes uh, you will need to just you know uh, process using mappers only okay you don't need to aggregate anything you don't need to combine the values uh, you know of a single keys you just need to process it uh, as it is okay you just need to do some parallel uh, activities and that is where the uh, you know uh, reduced face is not at all required in your program so it's completely optional but mapper is compulsory mapper is kind of a mandatory phase and a classic example of uh, you know uh, only mapper and no reducer kind of a framework or kind of a program is scoop so scoop we will see in our uh, for the modules where scoop is a utility tool to import and export data from HDFS to RDBMS so that is where you don't need to uh, do any uh, sort of fancy aggregations like some min max average or anything like that you just need to copy the data from uh, you know your RDBMS to HDFS or HDFS to RDBMS so only mappers are required in that case right so uh, scoop is a uh, utility tool where no reducer is required so uh, that is what mentioned over here so uh, always uh, beneficial it is uh, to have a multiple splits multiple input splits because the time taken to process a split is very small as compared to the time taken for processing the whole input so always it is a good practice if you uh, divide your uh, input job or my previous job or file to uh, multiple input splits okay and when the splits are very small the processing is better to load balance since we are processing Processing the splits in parallel okay uh, if you see this particular diagram yeah so if you see this particular diagram like here the splits uh, are there okay and three splits are there so uh, you know when the splits are too small the overload of managing the splits and map task creation begins to dominate the total job execution time okay so uh, it is you know also not desirable to have splits too small in size here it's completely fine because we are learning right but in a very big uh, data scenario the splits should be ideally uh, you know not too small not too large okay something like that for most of the jobs it is better to split uh, you know uh, to make a split uh, size equal to the size of an HDFS block for example uh, HDFX blocks if you see release 1 is 64 MB and uh, release 2 is like 128 MB so uh, it is a good practice if you uh, you know split according to the HDFS block size and execution of map tasks uh, you know uh, they, they result uh, into writing output to a local disk okay on the respective node uh, for example uh, this output dear comma one bear comma one river comma one that would be written on the local mappers disk okay not to the hdfs final output only uh, you know written to hdfs so reason for choosing this local disk over the hdfs is to avoid the replication because if you are writing anything on hdfs again replication would come into the picture because in hdfs we have to replicate something because hdfs is running on a commodity hardware which can fail anytime so the map output is intermediate output and this this is completely you know intermediate thing which is not at all uh, you know relevant to your users uh, output okay users are not interested in your intermediate calculation okay so storing it in hdfs with replication it becomes overkill so in the event of node failure before the map output is consumed by the reduced task hadoop returns uh, you know to this mapper for example uh, mapping and shuffling and reducing before reducing here uh, you know some node failure happened for this particular mapper m1 then it will come to this mapper m1 or any other mapper okay it's not like only mapper one will do this mapping uh, activity it can go to any other uh, node as well and it will basically rerun your mapper okay for that particular split so uh, hadoop will rerun the map task on any another node and then it will recreate the output and then again the reduce uh, phase comes into the picture and finally the output would be generated so reduce task doesn't work on the concept of locality reducing if you see that can't work at data locality uh, you know because 
uh, you have to combine every key together to get the correct uh, you know uh, aggregated value if if your one uh, key is there at one node another key is there at another node and if you are doing local aggregation <coughs> local aggregation then it is not going to give you the correct result right you have to club or shuffle them uh, so that every uh, you know single key from that pair would be coming at one central location or at one location where you can perform the aggregation so uh, that is that is must okay so map output is always uh, you know transferred to the machine where the reduced task is running okay and on that re uh, machine where reduced task is running the output is merged and then passed to the user defined reduce function so unlike the map output reduce output is always uh, stored in hdfs because that is what your final output is right so uh, that is that is how the architecture uh, you know of map reduce uh, is there uh, in the deep level at the deep level how the things are working that that's what we have seen till now now let us understand the uh, processing engine demons uh, which are nothing but job tracker and the task tracker so in hadoop uh, release 1 i'm i'm talking specifically for release 1 because in release 2 or yarn the demons are drastically different okay and we are we are studying uh, release 1 uh, so that we can see what were the bottleneck in release 1 and how they were actually you know uh, overcome or how they were resolved with release 2 so uh, hadoop is dividing the job into two type of tasks which are nothing but the map task which will uh, have that input split or actual mapping okay and then uh, it will be having a reduced task where if you see uh, that short and uh, shuffle and the actual aggregation uh, takes place right so the job would be divided into multiple tasks for sure uh, but these are the two primarily type of tasks okay so the complete execution process of this map and reduce task is controlled by two type of entity which i just told you like job tracker and task tracker so job tracker if you see that daemon is nothing but the master uh, daemon uh, like we have seen uh, you know in hdfs also uh, hadoop is working as a master slave architecture so job tracker is acting as a master over here and task tracker is acting uh, as a slave over here like in uh, hdfs also we have seen right like name node secondary name node standby name node they were like master in this in that architecture and uh, data node was the task uh, you know slave for that architecture so here task tracker is actually the slave and uh, job tracker is actually the master so job trackers responsibility is nothing but to complete the execution of the submitted job which is uh, you know uh, submitted by any client basically so client is submitting a job uh, okay job tracker would actually uh, you know assign that particular job divide that particular job to multiple task trackers and those are the task trackers which are the slave and they will perform the actual task they are performing the job they look after execution of individual task uh, you know which resides on every data node uh, executing part of the job uh, and they also these task trackers whenever they are doing the task they will also send some heartbeat signal to the job tracker okay uh, saying that they are alive and what is the you know uh, status current status of the system so in case of any event failure if a particular task tracker is down and, and the heartbeat signal is not coming up from it so job tracker will try to you know uh, assign that particular task which was earlier assigned to task tracker 1 let us say to task tracker 3 okay so you know on different task tracker if if it assigns so ultimately the goal is like uh, you know your task should be accomplished so all this monitoring activity okay coordination activity uh, you know also the scheduling activity uh, to run the job on different data nodes all these things are getting accomplished by the job tracker so this is how the map reduce program is organized uh, in these two entity uh, called job tracker and task tracker which are the demons of this processing engine 
then i want to uh, then i want to share with you a very uh, important concept which is data locality so uh, in our centralized architecture if you see there is a, a you know a single server which is managing all the things and all the client requests and all so uh, there basically we are moving the data where we are moving the data to the cpu okay so that is one thing and in the distributed or hadoop uh, architecture if you see we are actually uh, moving the cpu uh, to the data or processing unit to the data so moving the huge data okay uh, uh, to processing like moving this huge data to cpu because the data is growing right like this uh, humongous amount of data if you are copying to uh, cpu then definitely it is a very costly uh, operation okay cost wise also that is not good also the network traffic would be there right so network performance will be also deteriorated then uh, you know uh, processing will take time because the data is processed by a single cpu or single unit and that is becoming the bottleneck so uh, master node would be you know overburdened and it may fail but here in map reduce that design is actually you know uh, replaced with kind of a uh, completely reverse thing where processing unit is coming uh, to the data and that would give you a data locality advantage so for example if a particular node is having the data then you will perform your map reduce program on that node only and then the final uh, output of that program would be again uh, you know handled by the map reduce framework but that would be but that would be not that much complex right so wherever the data is you perform your uh, you know program or your execution so that the data doesn't have to move okay so that is that is where the data locality advantage is coming into the picture so let us see uh, what were actually the major concerns uh, surrounding hadoop 1.x architecture or i should say hadoop release 1 architecture so if you see uh, hadoop release 1 uh, the map reduce uh, was you know kind of a flagship and the only processing engine uh, hadoop was supporting so the main focus was mainly only on the batch processing jobs batch processing jobs means there is a batch which you submit and uh, you know uh, and you just need to uh, give some time many uh, you know uh, hours sometimes even days uh, or months to process that particular job uh, so the data would be in bulk and then the entire uh, output would be there after some period of time okay so you have to be patient enough to uh, you know get your data uh, to be processed uh, under this map reduce uh, thing depending on the data size right so basically batch processing is something uh, very much useful when you want to process some historical data but what if about real time data analytics if you want to uh, get the analysis of a cricket uh, you know uh, match score or uh, probability of cricket match score or any any live uh, thing right uh, like twitter trending analysis so at that time if you are submitting data in bulk you are storing the data and then you are submitting data in bulk then the map reduce is not a good fit for your application right because it is not giving you the real time or quick interactive analysis so uh, that was the major concerns also you can say the single point of failure was there for the name node this is respect to hdfs which we have already covered in our hdfs module like name node was uh, still a bottleneck or uh, it was not able to provide that higher availability of the cluster right so uh, it was quite impossible uh, in hadoop release 1 to run non map reduce job or non map reduce tools because of it uh, uh, its tight coupling of job tracker plus the mr engine and if you see the job tracker job tracker was doing so many things right uh, job tracker was overburdened uh, because it was doing scheduling it was monitoring all the task tracker assigning the uh, particular you know tasks uh, to the data nodes or uh, task tracker machines so so many things were there uh, you know which was handled by a single entity which is job tracker 
so uh, hadoop 1 actually popularized map reduce pro programming only for batch jobs and demonstrated the potential value of large scale distributed processing but if you see map reduce it is very much input output intensive okay io intensive it is not suitable for the interactive analysis because here you are submitting a job okay to the mr engine after some point of time you are getting the output and then again if you want to do something then you again need to uh, you know submit that output to the mr engine and it has to again give you some another output right so this kind of uh, pipeline jobs pipeline jobs are not a good fit for uh, you know mr kind of engine and it has some constraints uh, you know in support of graph if you see graph analysis then machine learning if you see or any other memory intensive algorithm where uh, you want some quicker uh, you know uh, analysis some uh, on the fly analysis interactive analysis so that is where the concerns were there uh, surrounding MapReduce engine okay and Hadoop 1 uh, you know that uh, that was having these challenges and then Hadoop 2 or 2.x Hadoop release 2 came into the picture okay to resolve these concerns and the the architecture name which they gave is yarn yarn is uh, full form is yet another resource negotiator so as the name suggests it is negotiating for the resources okay it supports multiple data processing engine that means now your choice is not limited to only map reduce it can also support spark taze this kind of architecture or this kind of processing engine and it is often called as operating system of Hadoop, right? Uh, like operating system is heart of any computer. This is also the heart of the Hadoop ecosystem, right? So there are many applications which are now supported on top of YARN and still your storage is relying on highly HDFS and HBase, okay? So if you see uh, in Hadoop release 2, the changes which happened uh, from HDFS level hdfs level if you see there was a no uh, you know single name node but now they are having this uh, you know active and standby uh, configuration i think we have already covered uh, pretty much in detail in our hdfs module okay so uh, this is this is where uh, you know release 2 is different from release 1 right so hdfs uh, level changes are there then uh, 64 mb earlier uh, you know in release 1 that was the default block size but now in release is 2 it is increased to 128 MB as the default block size then if we talk about from the map reduce level or the processing engine level okay so yarn is completely a new architecture which came into the picture and the job tracker is now uh, you know completely uh, you know bypassed and now the job tracker tasks are basically divided into uh, one which we known as job scheduler and then there is a AM application manager which is managing all the applications okay and it supports all the type of applications like uh, you know map reduce then you can have a support of spark you can have a support for this okay so uh, you are basically not uh, you know tightly coupled with map reduce so not only batch processing okay uh, here along with batch processing it is also processing some real time world uh, challenges real time application okay and uh, there is a architecture support of storm as well which is a real time pipeline processing system so those things are uh, you know drastically changing how we are looking uh, at hadoop right like what what exactly the uh, hadoop's architecture supports okay so it was a drastic change yarn is uh, you know a very big change so that is the reason release 2 is a very uh, crucial release and nowadays in production uh, mostly i have seen like people are already uh, starting their projects with Hadoop release 2 but I have tried to uh, you know uh, balance the things out like what were the things in release 1 and then what all the challenges we were facing in release 1 and then we migrated to release 2 right so that explanation will actually give you confidence like uh, how the Hadoop was there and now how the Hadoop is evolved as a uh, you know all-rounder kind of a ecosystem where it supports spark as well uh, you know real time uh, big data analytics and all all those things right so it's quite interesting uh, like hadoop was not always like this before so that's that's where uh, i am coming from 
so uh, let us let so let us uh, you know learn something more about yarn so yarn is actually uh, you know kind, kind of a foundation you can say it is a foundation of the new generation uh, foundation of uh, you know new era of hadoop because it is uh, enabling so many uh, or, you know organizations uh, everywhere to realize the modern data architecture how the hadoop is not that typical batch processing system and so many organizations were interested in real time data processing and yarn is helping over there right so uh, yarn was introduced as i told you with hadoop 2 so before that yarn was not there so hadoop 2 introduced this kind of uh, you know uh, resource negotiator and it is part of the hadoop project only so uh, architectural uh, changes which uh, which are there in hadoop to support this kind of multiple data processing engine are like interactive sql real time streaming you know uh, even the data science data science is also booming right now so those supports are also now possible machine learning okay and along with batch processing so all these things are there along with batch processing to handle the data stored in a single platform hdf or and it will truly like it will unlock a new uh, approach entirely new approach for the analytics world right so uh like an operating system on a server yarn is actually designed to allow like multiple uh, and uh, what you can say diverse you know uh, diverse uh, user application which will run on a multi tenant uh, platform like hadoop now uh, let us understand at demons level what are the differences so yarn's original purpose was like to split up the responsibilities which was there by the job tracker or task tracker into separate entities altogether because job tracker was overburdened right in hadoop release 1 so that is where they introduced completely new demons like resource manager which we called shortly rm which is a global resource manager that means for a cluster for a cluster there would be one resource manager then for every application there would be a application master uh, whenever you are submitting a job uh, let us say it is of map reduce type or it is a, a you know spark type or tez execution so depending on the execution engine your application types are uh, changing right so per application you will be having an application master which is managing for that particular kind of application then you will be having a slave or also uh, which is in terms of node manager nm which is managing all the nodes so definitely whatever number of nodes you are having those many slaves or node managers would be there and every node manager would run a per application container basically we will see uh, what exactly the container is right so uh, these are the four entities uh, you know Uh, which are newly introduced as a part of yarn and uh, job tracker and task tracker they are now you know uh, gone and uh, these four entities have uh, take the play, uh, take the uh, you know in charge of all this uh, uh, you know scheduling your uh, actual mundane task or monitoring or whatever you say which was done by job tracker and task tracker uh, they are quietly uh, you know uh, easily efficiently done by all these uh, four entities so uh, if we talk about actors then uh, at least three actors should be there right there should be a client who is submitting the job there is a master which is resource manager now and there is a slave which is node manager right so let us uh, you know uh, get more insights like which component is doing what like resource manager so as we know it would be one per cluster you can say it is uh, you know clustered wide a single resource manager or you can say a master of this master slave architecture then it is managing uh, you know the use of resources across the cluster right so uh, it is having all those knowledge like rack awareness is there then how many resources each rack is having okay uh, it is running its own services also right and uh, it is doing the scheduler part also so if i talk you uh, uh, you know about resource manager then resource manager is particularly doing uh, this resource uh, resource scheduler 
uh, one task is resource scheduler then another one it is doing is application master as we uh, saw in our previous slide like application master it's liveness monitoring so that is also a task which is done by the resource manager okay then if we if we see a uh, node manager which is a slave right so node manager liveness monitoring is also uh, you know done by this resource manager and last but not the least is several event handlers there are also several uh, event handlers which are handled by the uh, resource manager so uh, resource scheduler is something very uh, you know important uh, it is designed uh, such a way that it is having the intelligence how to assign the resources how to uh, you know schedule uh, the jobs how to assign the resources across node managers okay so that is where uh, you know that uh, intelligence is there more smarter approach is there so that it is it is uh, you know allowing uh, uh, other uh, job types also other than map reduce okay then if i uh, if i talk about uh, node manager the node manager is running on all the nodes let us say you are having a cluster with uh, you know uh, five nodes node number 1 node number 2 node number 3 node number 5 then each and every node would have a node manager node manager would be running on each and every node so you can say if you are having a number of nodes uh, those many number of node managers would be there and it is used uh, you know to launch and monitor the containers so if you see node manager then node manager will have let us say some container number 1 then container number 2 container number 3 likewise okay so um, whenever it is starting whenever the node manager is starting it is announcing itself to the rm resource manager so periodically node manager will set, uh, send some sort of heartbeat signal to resource manager and each node manager will offer some resources to the cluster resources as in like cpu cores uh, you know your uh, uh, hard disk your uh, ram all those uh, you know precious resources which are there on that particular machine node is ultimately a machine only right a physical machine so uh, uh, your uh, uh, you know resources would be offered by node manager so its resource capacity is the amount of memory amount of uh, you know number of cores uh, at run time the resource scheduler will decide how to use this capacity so it has to declare uh, everything to uh, resource manager basically and a container container means nothing but a fraction of the node manager capacity let us say it is having like uh, 16 gb of ram and uh, with four uh, cpu cores okay so with that uh, you know a container Uh, is nothing but fraction of the node manager capacity like uh, two cpu cores let us say simplicity uh, for simplicity i'm taking example of two cpu cores and uh, 4 gb of ram so for a client it is allocating two cpu cores and 4 gb of ram and that would be nothing but your container so uh, container is a fraction of the node manager capacity and it is used by the client for running a program to run a program this this is what your uh, you have got this is what you have got to run your application like that of course client can ask for a uh, uh, you know desired number of uh, cpu cores uh, ram uh, memory uh, or anything like that right so client has rights to uh, ask for uh, you know desired thing but if 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 it is available if it is possible feasible then definitely the container with those many uh, you know cpu cores and uh, ram would be given to you but if not then resource scheduler will decide how to use this capacity so container executes an application specific process with a constrained set of resources okay whatever it has got it has to execute that application basically and container may be a unix process you you can also assume it's a unix process and uh, node manager basically takes instruction from the rm okay rm can give some rm can give some instruction to node manager okay and node manager is something which is managing resources on a single node for that particular node so that's why the resource manager is also relaxed now right and um, 
node manager's main task if you see then um, that includes that keeping up to date to resource manager then uh, overall uh, you know containers life cycle management uh, you know monitoring the resource usages uh, tracking the node health logs management all the services basically uh, which yarn is providing to us those are uh, you know handled by the no node manager that is doing all those uh, you know particular node specific management and that's where resource manager is more relaxed now it just has to manage the node manager okay so that's how the things are there for the node manager Then if we talk about application master AM, then application master would be something uh, very specific to that particular framework. For example, MapReduce or, uh, you know, Spark, you, you have Tez, you know, you are having Storm. So it is a framework specific. I would say it is a framework specific uh entity which is negotiating resources from the resource manager and it works with the node managers basically it will negotiate to rm then uh, you know uh, it will then uh, check with the node manager node manager will tell like i am having these many resources and then a resource manager will allocate to application master and that, that way application master then finally uh, you know uh, work with the node manager to execute and monitor the component task but application and master uh, application master and node manager can't work uh, you know without the resource manager it has to uh, you know uh, inform to resource manager and each application master has the responsibility for negotiating appropriate resource containers from the scheduler uh, tracking their status uh, you know and monitoring their progress so that is that is what the duty of application master is so let us see anatomy of a yarn application run uh, what actually goes behind the scene when a yarn application is submitted so whenever you want to run any application on yarn uh, you know a client contacts the resource manager as you can see uh, in the very first step and it it asks it to run uh, an application master process whatever application type is let us say it is a map reduce or a spark according to the application type it contacts the resource manager by submitting the yarn application now the resource manager will find uh, like which is the best suitable node for the uh, you know application master which it wants to run or application which it wants to run so it finds a node manager basically and then inside the node manager it is starting and uh, the container then the container would be launched basically okay container as uh, you know now like it is you know fraction of node manager capacity which is allocated to a particular instance okay which is nothing but the container and uh, precisely application application master uh, you know uh, uh, what application master does once it is running that depends on the application so what application master doing is completely uh, you know on application because application master is a particular process which will run inside the container and it is a very much uh, uh, you know framework specific entity it could simply uh, you know run a computation in the container uh, it is running and then it will return the result to the client okay that is one possible way and uh, meanwhile it will also this node manager node okay so this, this is a node manager node which is uh, you know handling this particular container and it will periodically uh, you know uh, uh, send the heartbeat also but if your application doesn't fulfill or doesn't complete in this particular container it may ask for other containers also okay uh, uh, so uh, here if you see another node manager node is uh, actually called to uh, you know uh, launch another container which will run the another uh, you know application process kind of a unix process so uh, that's that's how the application is actually you know running what is the application lifespan in yarn uh, you know uh, uh, your resource manager client uh, you know this uh, application process all these are very much uh, you know crucial and they are connected to each each other okay so these entities are very much connected to each other and most non trivial yarn applications are using some form of, some form of remote communication you know like hadoop's uh, rpc layer to pass the status updates and results back to the client but again this is very specific to application so it can vary from application to application 
so uh, let us uh, quickly uh, summarize our uh, discussion by comparing the yarn uh, with hadoop release 1 so uh, mr1 or mr2 or yarn uh, mr2 is specifically you know hadoop release 2 or yarn so in MapReduce 1 the job tracker was taking care of uh, both the things like scheduling uh, that means matching the task with the task tracker and also a uh, task progress monitoring like keeping track of all the tasks restarting the failed task uh, so it was uh, you know uh managing the uh, task tracker failures also okay if some tasks are slow then again it has to do some sort of uh, processing you, you know bookkeeping uh, such as maintaining the counter totals and all okay by contrast in yarn these responsibilities are pretty much handled by separate entities altogether like a uh, resource manager uh, is doing some specific thing application master which is one for each map reduce job it is also doing some uh, different task right so uh, your job tracker response Responsibilities are divided uh, to multiple entities. Then the job tracker is also responsible for storing the job history for completed jobs. Okay, so whatever uh, jobs which are completed, there is a history which is also maintained by job tracker in Hadoop release 1. Although it is possible to run a job history server as a separate daemon to take the load off the job tracker, there is a possibility, but in Yarn they have clearly separated all these things. The equivalent role is timeline server there is a, a server or entity called a timeline server which is storing the application history so here a single job tracker is there but here if you see resource manager application master timeline server there are separate entities which are doing uh, you know separate separate tasks uh, or dividing the responsibilities of job tracker so this is what i call as a master and if i call you uh, if I call task tracker as a slave, then node manager over here is a slave. There is a slot. If you see in job, uh, uh, you know, word count job, you have seen input split and all those things, right? So there are some slots, but here, if you see, there is a container. So that entity is also quite different from Hadoop release one. So let us see, uh, you know, quickly what we have seen in this particular module. So now you are familiar with processing engine in Hadoop. You have, uh, you know, uh, got a deep uh, dive into uh, MapReduce algorithm using word count problem. You you saw like processing engine diamonds in Hadoop release one, like job tracker, task tracker, etc. And uh, you see. Uh, and now you can actually distinguish between Hadoop release 1 and Hadoop release 2 because you now know what are the changes uh, which happened in Hadoop release 1 as a part of the YARN framework or MapReduce version 2. What are the daemon changes, how the application is, uh, you know, uh, uh, running on behind the scene, anatomy of life, uh, anatomy of a YARN application run, all those things we have studied. So thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe too.